the Colorado Buffaloes are contending for the Big 12 title and the College Football Playoff, yet people are still talking about what Deion Sanders' next job will be rather than this one. You are Locked on Buffs, your daily podcast on the Colorado Buffaloes, part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. Welcome to Locked on Buffs. I am your host, Kevin Borba. Today's episode of Locked on Buffs is brought to you by our sponsors over at FanDuel. You get to start the season with a big return on FanDuel. New customers can place a $5 bet and you'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win that first $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com to get started. We are also brought to you by the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcast. So thank you guys for tuning in, liking, subscribing, making me your first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcast. Like I said, let's dive in right to it. Right now, there is a hot, hot, hot take, hot conspiracy theory circling around the world of college football and the NFL that Deion Sanders could be NFL bound, right? There's a lot of people saying, you know what? Deion Sanders to the Dallas Cowboys. He has a connection with Jerry. He, uh, he played there. He has, there's, they need a quarterback, even though they just re-signed Dak Prescott for a bajillion dollars, right? They, they, the Cowboys need a quarterback. They need a coach. And so everyone's saying Deion Sanders is that guy. And I think one, he said multiple times, Hey, I don't want to coach in the NFL, right? He has said that multiple times where it's like, Hey, this isn't for me. I don't want to coach in the NFL. I like being in college. And he says, I don't like leaving or he's don't plan on leaving Colorado. Now he said Colorado is like, obviously one of his, uh, his dream jobs. And I, he, this is what he said the other day. I'm happy where I am. I've got a kickstand down. You know what a kickstand is? That means I'm resting. I'm good. I'm happy. I'm excited. I'm enthusiastic about where I am. I love it here. I truly do. Clearly, a lot of people are not thrilled with Deion Sanders being in Colorado, right? They want Deion Sanders in a major market. It's the same reason that uh, Paul Feinbaum earlier in the year was saying Deion Sanders is a USC. It's the same reason that Deion Sanders to the Dallas Cowboys is not picking up legs. Um, and some of the people that are spreading this narrative want it's either one or two things, right? And this is sort of the the lens that you have to look at this through. One. They truly don't like that Deion Sanders is not in a marquee sort of program, right? They want him at a powerhouse SEC traditional power where it's like, go to Florida, right? Or go to Florida State, his alma mater, which he doesn't even claim as his alma mater anymore. Or he doesn't claim as his alma mater. Or, and like, they just don't respect what he's doing. They don't care about what he's building. They don't care about his impact at this location. They just want him to be at a bigger location so that way they could get even more clicks, views, whatever it may be, right? They either, so it's one or two things, right? They either don't respect what he's doing and what he's accomplished thus far, or two, in this weird twisted way, they are trying to help out Deion Sanders in a way by driving up his value even more as if Colorado isn't aware of it. Like you think Rick George doesn't know that the economy is booming in Boulder. You think Rick George doesn't know that Colorado is generating interest from recruits and players that they would have never, ever had a chance to land before. You think he doesn't know that? You really do. Because if you do, I got some beachfront property in North Dakota I'd like to sell you. Um, Obviously, Colorado is well aware what Deion Sanders is worth. I wouldn't be surprised if he gets a a fat, fat extension after this season because he is generating buzz, as he always does. He has turned this program into a success story overnight, really, from year one to year two. They are contending. Like last year, they were four and eight. They They showed signs of brightness where i was like i i thought they could have made a bowl game last year it obviously didn't come to fruition they showed bright moments now it's like they're contending for a conference title in year two at a program that has not been contending for anything uh over the past 20 years so rick george is well aware of what Deion sanders can do and so for the people that keep saying like hey Deion sanders to the dallas cowboys uh this needs to happen or Deion sanders to the dallas cowboys is really likely to happen i just don't think that they're really thinking of like how much of a how much of a jump he'd have to make he'd have to leave a place in Boulder that he seems to love he seems to really be entrenched in the community and i'm not oblivious i know every coach loves where they're at until a bigger dollar sign comes into play but why would Deion Sanders want to go to Dallas right like obviously there's the the connection of like oh they could get Shador right and that's assuming that they're going to move on from Dak Prescott and then draft his son Deion Sanders has never coached in the NFL and 
It's not to say that he couldn't because I'm sure one of the best NFL players or one of the best football players and athletes of all time could figure it out with the coaching experience he has. He has said he doesn't want to coach in the NFL. He wants he doesn't want to coach guys who are playing every week for a ch- paycheck where it's their job, whereas he'd rather coach guys where they're chasing that dream. And in the NFL, it's not that anymore, right? So one, he's already said he doesn't want to be there. Two, it's a different ball game, right? We've seen guys go into the NFL and not work out. Urban Meyer was a straight up disaster. Uh, I know not everyone in the Colorado and Nebraska um, worlds like this comparison, but Matt Rule did not do well in the NFL. He was quite terrible, actually. Nick Saban, um, he went 15 and 17 in the NFL. Uh, there's a lot of guys. The only Pete Carroll and Jim Harbaugh are the couple guys who stand out as having success. Um, after making the jump, right? Cliff Kingsbury got fired. He's better as a coordinator now. And Carroll and Harbaugh, guess what they had in common? They had an NFL background. So just stop with this, right? Let Deion Sanders pave his own path. And I think it's annoying and sort of overplayed where it's like he has to move on to a bigger place because that's what he has to do. Let Deion Sanders decide his future. Right now, he thinks, and I, I couldn't agree more, that Colorado is the best place for him. And you know why I'm saying this? Not because I host Locked on Bus and I love talking about Deion Sanders and, and seeing his the program's development, but because Deion Sanders is doing things differently, right? Once he gets to Dallas, do you think Jerry Jones is going to give him full autonomy of like the Dallas Cowboys and let him control whatever? The same Jerry Jones who is threatening to fire a radio host who asked him a, a legitimate question? Right. Okay. The same Jerry Jones who inks... Ezekiel Elliott to a massive deal or brings Ezekiel Elliott back or whatever. Like we're going to trust him to do this, right? Sure. Okay. Same thing with other programs around college football. Are other programs going to be bought into Deion Sanders and his methods, right? A lot of these programs around the country and they have these pro the, not these programs. They have these boosters who it's like, they think they are holier than thou and they think they're going to call the shots. Do you think Deion Sanders wants to be in a position like that where he has random dudes who are throwing a lot of money at the program being like, Hey, do this or I'm not going to fund your program anymore. Do you think that's what he wants? I doubt it. So Deion Sanders to the Dallas Cowboys doesn't make sense for those two reasons. Also, he's made a clear, aside from making it clear, he doesn't want to coach in the NFL. He's also made it clear. He doesn't plan to follow his sons. And I think that's the part where people are sort of missing the point, right? He does not want to be someone who just follows along and tags along the coattails of his son or his sons, excuse me. So why would this change now? All of a sudden, because there's a, a prominent job at the uh, one of the teams he played for, it's like, okay, he's going to throw all that aside just because for the for the vibes, right? Don't think so. So this Deion Sanders to Dallas narrative, I think, is insulting to him and what he said so far this season or throughout his career. And I think it's insulting to um, just what he's trying to accomplish, right? They're not really taking into account um, what he's trying to do. And turn around a program that once was that ended up struggling forever like let him do that what he needs to do um is what i have to say about the matter you guys comment below do you agree with me do you think it's insulting to Deion sanders do you think i'm missing the point let me know what you think when we come back we're going to be talking about the six big announcements that were made on wednesday about the colorado buffaloes this episode of locked on bus is brought to you by our sponsors over at mint mobile let me tell you about mint mobile i love a great deal as much as the next guy but i'm not going to crawl through a bed of hot coals just to save a few bucks it has to be easy no hoops no bs so when mint mobile says it was easy or said it was easy to get wireless for 15 dollars a month with the purchase of a three-month plan i called them out on it turns out it really is that easy to get a wireless plan for 15 dollars a month the longest part of the process was the time i spent on hold waiting to break up with my older provider to get started, go to mintmobile.com slash locked on college. There you'll see that right now, all three month plans are only $15 a month, including the unlimited plan. All plans come with the high speed data and unlimited talk and text delivered on the nation's largest 5G network. You can use your own phone with any Mint Mobile plan and bring your own phone number along with all your existing contacts. Find out how easy it is to switch to Mint Mobile and get three months of premium wireless service for 15 bucks a month to get this new customer offer and your new three-month premium wireless plan for just 15 bucks a month, go to mintmobile.com slash college. That's mintmobile.com slash college. Cut your wireless bill to 15 bucks a month at mintmobile.com. That's M-I-N-T. Disclaimer, $45 up front, $40 up front, $45 up front payment required. 
um, equivalent to fifteen dollars a month. New customers on the first three months plan only. Speed slower than slower above forty gigabytes on unlimited plan. Additional fees, taxes, and restrictions apply. Cement Mobile for details. This episode of Locked On Bus is also brought to you by our sponsors over at the Locked On Podcast Network. It's your team every day for free and available wherever you get your podcasts. So make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. Um, and don't miss out on a single episode of Locked on Buffs. We kind of got some NFL draft declarations today, um, as if we didn't already know these were coming. Um, but these are about as official uh, draft announcements as it gets without saying, hey, I'm going to the draft. Um, so on Wednesday, six Colorado Buffaloes were announced as anna- were announced as accepting An invitation to the East-West Shrine Bowl, which is a college all-star game prior to the NFL draft, gives an opportunity to work out in front of scouts, coaches, teams, organizations in the NFL and other professional leagues. Um, And it gives them an opportunity to sort of boost their draft stock, talk to teams, and obviously get feedback. And so the Buffs announced six players today, um, headlined by Shador Sanders, which was kind of a surprise to most people in NFL draft circles because Shador Sanders is typically, um, he's of the caliber player where they expected him to go to the Reese's Senior Bowl, which is kind of viewed as the cream of the crop um, potential all-star game, right? Now, that being said, Shador Sanders uh, and Coach Prime, they know what they're doing, right? This is in Dallas. It gives them a chance to go home. Um, gives them a chance to bring attention to this bowl game. He'll have a chance to stand out. Um, and then he's joined by his brother, Shiloh Sanders, who is also announced as having accepted an invitation, safety Cameron Simon Craig. Um, and then a trio of wide receivers, Jimmy Horn Jr., LeJonte Wester, and Will Shepard. So I wanted to go through each of their, their seasons and talk about what they've done and how I think they've either improved or, for in the case of Will Shepard and LeJonte Wester, made impacts um, this far. So Shador Sanders, as we all know, I think he's the best quarterback in college football. Um, he's thrown for 3,200 yards, completed 72.9% of his passes, almost 73%, um, 27 touchdowns, 7 picks. These are the most picks he's thrown in his career oddly enough. And I still think that this is, he's also never had a higher completion percentage. So a couple of the picks are extremely fluky. Um, and I stand corrected. He threw eight his freshman year. Um, that being said, he's thrown some fluky picks where it's like, I think it was the North Dakota state game where it bounced off a guy's leg. We've had some Marion Miller, um, against Nebraska where I think he ran the wrong route. Um, and Shador called it a rookie mistake or whatever. Needless to say, Shador Sanders is leading or among the best in all of college football in terms of passing in just about every category. And he's proven that he's a reliable playmaker who you give him a chance to make a play to lead your team down the field, he's going to do just that. So Shore Sanders, there's not a quarterback in college football that I trust more than him um, to score, to lead the team, to glory, success, whatever it may be. Um, Let's move on to the receivers. LeJounte Wester, right? 55 catches for 660 yards, eight touchdowns. He is second on the team in touchdown catches. And... He is just an all-around impact type of guy. He returned a punt for a touchdown against Utah. Um, he's always open. Uh, I think he obviously had more production at, at FAU last year. He had 108 catches, right? LeJounte Wester has saved Colorado multiple times, right? I think he, I mean, he. I know he caught the, the Hail Mary touchdown pass against Baylor that kept that game alive and kept their hopes alive, and they won that game, right? He's also had multiple games where, like I think Texas Tech was one where he gets the game going. He gets it going for Colorado. He gets him going against Utah where he is sort of like this energy in a bottle, lightning in a bottle type of guy where he just needs one chance to make a play and he will make that play and sort of get the team going. So I like what he brings to the table super fast. Um, I think the funniest thing I've seen about LeJounte Wester all season was when someone questioned the speed and I was like, oh, uh, yeah, that's a dumb question. Will Shepard, um, 6'3", 205, wide receiver from Tr- Vanderbilt. Um, I, at the beginning of the year, I was like, this guy is going to be great. Um, and the first few games, right. He goes two catches, three catches, seven catches against Colorado state, one catch against Baylor, including a dropped, um, hell Mary that I think most people were like, okay, get this guy out of the rotation. We don't want to see him anymore. Um, he should, shouldn't play again through those first four games. He had eight catches, 11, 13 catches, no touchdowns, right? Then the UCF game. A, a, a switch flips right he grabs that diving touchdown catch for he has four catches for 99 yards against Kansas State he has a touchdown Arizona a touchdown Texas Tech a touchdown like he has more game or 
five out of the last six games, he has a touchdown catch. Um, and then he had two against Utah. Will Shepard has turned into one of the cons- most consistent playmakers for this Colorado team. Um, he's kind of turned into a jump ball guy where Shador's like, I'm going to throw it up to him and he's going to come down to it. And if it's in the red zone, he might come down with it, come down with it with just one hand. Cause Will Shepard has turned into one of the biggest playmakers for the buffs this season. So I really like to see his improvement from fans being like, get this guy the hell out of here to now it's like, okay, Will Shepard is a playmaker that we need, right? Will Shepard is a playmaker that we need um, to sort of rely on and sort of, um, sort of need to trust, right? You know, he, he didn't break all those records at Vanderbilt and, put up all those massive numbers by accident, right? He was a really good player. And I think he just had a couple rough moments. Um, let's go to the next guy, Cameron Simmons, Craig. He's the heart and soul of this defense. He's second on the team in total tackles by one. He has 72, 72 total tackles. He has two sacks, um, which is very good for safety, obviously. Um, and then he also has one forced fumble, three pass deflections. And I think he just brings this, crazy amount of energy crazy amount of effort um he's just all over the place all the time and i think he's a leader on this defense that they need right i think when they lost shiloh sanders the reason i wasn't worried was because they had cameron simon craig cameron simon craig and it's like he has continually shown that even though he's undersized um, transferred from an hbcu he's that guy right and i think he proved a lot of people wrong Uh, and then shiloh sanders right i think shiloh sanders of all these guys maybe cameron simon craig and Jimmy Horn Jr. Let's let me. I'll go back to Jimmy before I, I move on. Jimmy Horn Jr. Thirty-three catches, four hundred thirty-four yards, and touchdown. Not the best numbers, right? I think we were expecting a little bit more from him. Um, he's been banged up. Um, that being said, he still has a chance to put up some big numbers if he's able to return down the stretch. He's also one of the fastest players in the country, so that always helps, right? When you go to the NFL, if you're fast, um, aka John Ross and Xavier Worthy. Uh, Xavier Worthy was proven. Both those guys were proven at the college level. If you're fast, super fast, that that being said, you will find a role. You will find a spot, um, and then you will have a chance to prove yourself. Let's go to Shiloh Sanders, right? I think Shiloh Sanders has the most to prove out of this group simply because he's having his worst season in terms of um, just not what we expected from him, right? He gets injured, comes back, he's missed some tackles. I think PFF is credited him with six missed tackles. Um, he has his lowest overall defensive grade and his lowest overall coverage grade um, of his career this season. So that's not great. Um, and then also all those other guys have high upside. Um, Shiloh is a 60 year senior um, who he did get some, I think it was second team um, honors at Jackson state who he's shown the ability or he's shown the ability to make big plays, but he's also shown the ability to whiff on tackles um, he's a hard hitter, but at the same time, he's a risky tackler. Uh, I think he has the most approved, right? I think in most cases, most people view him as going undrafted. And I think this would be a prime time for him to sort of, to sort of show that he deserves to belong on the radar of NFL team. So I will keep you guys updated on where all the NFL guys go for the Colorado Buffaloes. It's going to be really fun, really cool to follow their journeys along, along the way. Um, you guys won't want to miss that. Um, when we come back, we're going to be talking about some Kansas chit chat. I guess you could say there's been some some verbal shots fired already. This episode of Locked On Buffs is brought to you by our sponsors over at Skylight Frames. Let me talk to you about Skylight Frames. Missing someone this holiday season and want them to be a part of your festivities from afar. Maybe gift giving isn't your love language. You overthink it and wind up with something disappointing or nothing at all. If you come from a big family, it can be hard and expensive to buy each one a personal gift for the holidays. So we've got the perfect gift for you. Skylight Frame is a touchscreen digital photo frame your whole family will love. Upload thousands of photos with your phone and watch them appear in seconds. It's so easy to use. Um, Setup takes less than 60 seconds. They have seamless sharing. Um, Invite friends and family to easily share photos via the Skylight mobile app or email. No account or subscription required. You add new photos straight from your phone from anywhere. Excuse me. It only takes a tap on your new phone or on your phone to send new photos to a frame across the country. It's the fastest, easy way to keep the loved one, keep your loved ones in the loop. They'll feel so much more connected with you. And now, as a special limited time offer for our listeners, get $20 off your purchase of a Skylight Frame when you go to skylightframe.com slash call. That's 
That's S K Y L I G H T F R A M E skylight frame.com slash college. Get $20 off your purchase now at skylight frame.com slash college. This episode of Locked on Buffs is also brought to you by our sponsors over at FanDuel. Get ready to tackle the NFL action with FanDuel, America's number one sportsbook. Because right now, new customers can bet $5, get $150 in bonus bets if you win. The FanDuel Sportsbook app gives you everything you need to place live bets on the NFL all in one place. So when you get a hunch in the middle of the game, you can check out the latest stats, view live play-by-play, and so much more on the same page, same page, excuse me, where you place your bets. Just visit FanDuel.com. Come to join today. You'll get started with $150 in bonus bets if you win your first $5 bet. That's FanDuel.com. Never waste a hunch and make every moment more with FanDuel, an official sportsbook partner of the NFL. Welcome back to Locked on Bus. We got a little bit of trash talk from the Jayhawk department um, on Wednesday. It's a lovely Wednesday over here. Kobe Bryant, who I guess is going to be matching up with Travis Hunter, Talked about how excited he is for this matchup, and I'll show you guys what he had to say because obviously um, we all love a little friendly jab here or there. So um, buckle up and enjoy the ride with me. Extra motivated, like yes, 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 <laughs> yes. I'm not gonna lie, I've been, I've been waiting. I already marked this on my notes. I already know this is the game. I said I've been wanting the game all season. Yeah, this is gonna be the game. Has extra motivated, like yes, yes. yes. Yes, yes, I'm not gonna lie. I've been, I've been waiting. I already marked this on my notes. I already know. So clearly, the young man is extra motivated to go up against Travis. Clearly, there's some sort of uh, premeditated beef, which I remember there was some, there was some discussions early in the off season um, between Kobe. Kobe Bryant's a confident fella, right? And he has four picks on the year, um, a forced fumble, um, four pass deflections, and he's really been, uh, he's been getting somewhat hot as of late three of those picks came against houston um and west the other one came against west virginia um so he's good right you know P- pff has gave it graded him as a 78.1 which is 96 out of 880 corners um his coverage grade 74.9 right solid um, nothing, nothing too special they have him graded as a 96 guy in the country uh let's just say i'm looking forward to this matchup and this Colorado Kansas matchup is an interesting one because I think Kansas is probably the second hottest team in the Big 12 behind Colorado. Um, they've won three out of their last four games. Two of those games came against ranked opponents, so they have a lot to prove. They have um, Kansas that is has two games left this season, Colorado and Baylor, to win a bowl game. They're sitting at four and six, so they have to sort of prove it that they can advance. They have to prove that they are able to contend um, for a bowl game spot, and they have no room for error. So. I'm really looking forward to this Kobe Bryant Travis Hunter matchup, and we'll be um, I'll be doing a locked over or locked over a lock, locked on crossover with the Kansas um, host on tomorrow, so air Friday that I'm excited about because we're going to be talking all things Colorado Kansas, and I think Colorado wins this game, but I do think it's going to be a bit uncomfortable. You guys comment below. What are your predictions for this game? Needless to say, though, I do think Travis Hunter will remember what Mr. Bryant had to say about him. This has been another episode of Locked on Bus. I appreciate you guys for tuning in every single day. Making me your first listen of the day. We're free and available wherever you get your podcasts. Make sure to like, subscribe, and follow. I'll see you guys tomorrow.